Speaking of moron, the GTX 1650 that's included in here is woefully inadequate compared to one, the CPU and two, the price of the computer. Is this just taped in place? That kind of sucks. Yeah, that's not great. Oh, that's really loose. Take a look at that. Adding to our growing massive playlist of pre-built gaming PC reviews is now Redux. This PC has been advertised very heavily on YouTube and media online. And so we wanted to buy it, especially after requests from our audience in the YouTube community page when we last asked, hey, what should we review next in the pre-built line? So this is a Redux good PC. They have a couple different tiers. Good is one of them. It's one of the cheapest ones. And this was just under $1,300 when we ordered it. The uh, components are not particularly impressive for the price, 10400F and a GTX 1650. So that that's gonna be a little rough, but we're also looking for if they built the machine competently. And that might be where Redux has an edge over some of its competition in the pre-built market if you've seen some of the other things we've reviewed. Let's get started. Before that, this video is brought to you by us and store.gamersnexus.net. After months of production, our next round of GN Teardown Toolkits now has an arrival date and is on back order on the store. These toolkits have been in extremely high demand since we started making them a few years ago. So if you want to guarantee that you get one from the next run while also helping us soak the cost on evaluating even more pre-built gaming PCs, back order one of them from the store today. The toolkits include 10 high quality tools with matched rod and handle lengths at 100 millimeters each, excellent for good balance and use, and for providing good torque while remaining portable. The tools include custom ground down hex heads that are flattened for small GPU screws, and they're also ground down externally to give more clearance against small components. We also include common Allen, Torx, and Phillips drivers, and a convenient roll bag for transportation. Visit store.gamersnexus.net to back order your set of long lasting tools today. So first, we'll put the specs list on the screen. This was a 10400F and 1650 build. The 1650 at the time was listed by Redux as $309. The MSRP, as a reminder, is $149. However, the retail at the time when we checked, this is about a month ago, was $365. It's closer to when we ordered it. So given that, it does appear like Redux is sticking closer to the truth than not when it advertises that it doesn't charge extra for components, it just charges a build fee, which it claims is $75. Uh, it is still massively overpriced, but if it's at least not a lie, then it's more of market conditions as opposed to just BS marketing, which it's more market conditions are more tenable between the two. So in the specs table, what we've done is gone through and collect the retail price for as close comparison components as we could find and it does come out pretty favorable for Redux, where it's not you're not spending that much more. Now, yes, you can pick things that make more sense. One of the things in that list you'll see, or in the computer you'll see, is a liquid cooler, and it's something like, is it six fans? I think it's like six fans in here. We'll go over that. But that's just, it's the wrong place to spend money, obviously, for a system that has a 1650 in it. So we disagree with the part selection, but uh, it doesn't look like you're spending much more if you were to build this exact system, which we're not, to be clear, we're not recommending that. If you built this exact system, it'd be pretty close in price. So again, our biggest reason for looking at this was the feedback from the YouTube community page. You've all certainly seen it in ads at this point. The reason Redux has popped up out of nowhere um, and has been able to throw the massive amounts of money it has been able to at advertising is because it's not just a startup no-name brand. It is in fact, a spin-off of some kind of digital storm, which has been around a very long time at this point, well-established system integrator and uh, pre-built PC builder. And so it's not, Redux didn't just spawn out of nothing and start spending, I don't even know, maybe potentially millions, but at least hundreds of thousands on advertising. Uh, it does in fact have a larger company behind it. So a couple of things as we get into this, the support and the turnaround time, those are very important factors. Uh, most of the PCs we've reviewed thus far in the pre-built list have been pretty quick to get in. They haven't taken a long time except for the Alienware system and the HP system was a bit problematic. This one did, however, take a long time to ship. Uh, when we ordered it and just before we ordered it, there was a statement that said, your pre-built PC will ship within 10 to 14 days of us getting it built. So it looks like it'll get there or ship sooner than it actually does. Technically, they're not inaccurate. It's just it's worded in a way where you might think it arrives sooner. We ordered this August 16th. It is currently October 18th when we're filming this, uh, and we received it last week. 
So it took a couple months to get here. It was very expensive. We had basically no feedback from Redux up until the point we emailed them and said, where is it? At which point they actually were extremely prompt and were very helpful, uh, provided links, helped us out with figuring out when it would arrive. So actually Redux did a great job once we reached out and asked for an update. And for that, they do get good marks because support's important. And if you ever have an order, even if it's for our store, for example, you should always email first to ask for help because the companies that are actually trying to get you the product will respond. Redux did that, so that was a good start. Okay, we're gonna get started on the teardown and the benchmarking. Uh, to be very clear, Redux has never run an ad against our channel. Normally, we don't have to say a, a negative. We don't have to say, this company hasn't run an ad on our channel. But just because Redux has been so spend heavy on advertising, we did wanna point that out. We haven't taken any money from them. Uh, we have, however, given them money, and that's for this computer. Okay, time to take apart the Redox PC. It's about $1,300, a good timing because our toolkits have just arrived back on back order. So if you want to get one, they've been out of stock for a while. The case is a TD500. We'll talk about this a lot during the review. I won't spend too much time talking about it now. But this is a case we've reviewed, and we reviewed it positively. Okay, so internally, it's a computer, and that's a good thing. Not because we weren't expecting a computer, but because it's using standard parts uh, or at least from what we can see thus far. We've got a standard form factor motherboard, that's micro ATX. We have a standard but completely overkill and unnecessary, in a way that's not helpful actually, liquid cooler. And the reason it's completely overkill or unhelpful is just because you're spending a lot for something that this can be handled with a stock cooler, especially because of the four fans that are included in the case as Redux ships it. I think the original TD500 might be three fans, we'll talk about that a little more later, but they're putting four fans in here, and then you got a push pull setup on the radiator, which it's just not beneficial for a 65 watt heat load. You will barely see an impact from push pull like this on a 200 watt heat load or 250 watt heat load, let alone 65, where stock cooler with an open panel with one fan would be sufficient. So way overkill here, and in a way that uh, is contributing to cost, where all of this money should probably be spent on this. Uh, and then they wouldn't be in as bad of a spot as they will be later when we show you. But in terms of the rest of it, kill management's okay. I can see that some of these front IO headers, and we'll get a closer up shot of this in a moment, are actually not fully seated, so that's not great. That could be QC, it could maybe be shipping, uh, but either way, that's, that's not something we want to see. Two sticks of RAM, that is great to see. Sadly, very rare with pre builds for some reason. So let's take these out, see what they've put in here. So there's the RAM. It is this Patriot Patriot Viper RAM, uh, and it's going to be a 3200 megahertz kit, but it's not running at that speed. We'll talk about that later as well because they technically spec this as a B460 board, but what I'm seeing here, this is a B560M Pro E, so it is actually a better board than it was technically specified, and. Um, that's just stock availability. B560 is unlocked for memory for the uh, the non-K SKUs, so this memory could run at 3200, but they're not doing that. So that's a very unfortunate waste of potential there. Heat spreaders aren't necessary, but it is a mark of quality at least. Uh, typically is is uh, associated with higher quality memory, not always. It's not, not because the heat spreader just because they're spending more on it. Speaking of more on, the GTX 1650 that's included in here is woefully inadequate compared to one the cpu and to the price of the computer standard video card here you can see it's a cheap i mean it's a 1650 doesn't need a lot of cooling but uh not seeing any copper in there there's definitely no copper heat pipes that is just an aluminum fin stack now as far as patrick and i are concerned we would like to see this with the tubes mounted down as long as there's slack for it this is okay the pump is not at the top so You've got the radiator tank a little bit above the pump. It's not the highest point in the loop, so it's not going to run too dry and die. But uh, this will, over time, affect minimally the acoustics. You'll get some more bubbling or pump wine noises occasionally as stuff moves around. And um, ideally, it should be tubes down, but it's not as bad as the pumping at the top of the loop. Still not how, how we would like to see it built, though, especially for like high volume where you're worried about every bit of longevity mattering. But look at this. Has Digital Storm been watching Gamers Nexus? Look at the orientation of this all-in-one cooler. Motherboard quality, no VRM heatsink on this. Pretty simple board for a 10400F. You might not ever really need it. Uh, we'd have to do a separate board analysis if we cared about that. 
but there's so much cooling in here with four fans, two more up here for the push-pull setup, open air up at the top where there's no fans but air can move freely based on the pressure created by these fans. There's so much air movement around here with a 10 400 f at 65 watts. The VRM is going to be fine. It's only really going to struggle if they keep using this board for a higher end CPU. So uh, if they're using this board for like a 10 900K or 11, then that's a problem. So here's a fan header. We're going to talk about this in more detail later. Patrick had a lot of thoughts on how this was set up. You can see SATA running up here to the fan header. Uh, we've got standard PWM fan connections. We have ARGB connections. Is this just taped in place? That kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of stupid. <laughs> so I like how they've got holes where they filled them <laughs> or they never punched them out that are four screws. But uh, instead of using those and securing it with screws somewhere, uh, they'd have to not really retool, but they would have to modify the, the chassis. And presumably they're ordering enough volume from Cooler Master here where they could get a modification made. But anyway, yeah, they just, instead of using the screws here, they just went with the tape. I guess it reduces risk if there's a, maybe we should check it for a, sh a potential short. It certainly reduces risk of a screw scraping the PCB and causing a short if there's a 12 volt plan that's exposed, but that shouldn't be happening. Uh, then again, talk to, I guess, Fractal and then TXT about that. Um, so anyway, it's not particularly as strong. This feels like it's going to come off with age as well, just like this would. So I, I, I'd like to see something else for that. Kill management looks pretty good. This is all standard stuff. Zip ties everywhere. And excessive amounts of zip ties, but very well cable managed PC. Let's get the board out. Okay, that was definitely on there. How's the paste? Paste application is not great. I don't know if this is being pre-applied by Cooler Master. Redux is ultimately responsible for everything where you're kind of treating them as a hub. That bottom corner has got no coverage and you can see that here. Zero coverage there. Look, it's not a big deal. It's 65 watts. Uh, it's cooling just fine. This is massive overkill for the CPU. So I'm not really complaining about this particular setup because it's okay, but um, you really want to contact the whole IHS for cooling. Just always general rule. So that's all fine. Way overkill on the cooling. Not necessarily bad, but system like this, money should be spent elsewhere. It's not going to be competitive with high cooling and nothing to cool that's of value. Fairly standard, just a, it's an off-the-shelf motherboard. This is a good thing. They haven't done some weird proprietary stuff. So standard board, we've got a by 16 PCIe slot, you can see by wiring. And I've got a, a screw that's just stuck in there. I'll dislodge that later. So it's 80 plus gold, 700 watt. We've got a whole piece on 80 plus if you want to learn more about it. Uh, a lot of people think it means more than it does. In terms of power capability, is maximum power 700 watts, obviously. You can get all, this is good. I like to see this. Uh, 12 volts right there, 12 volts. You can get all 700 on 12 volts, that's great. Andrew has informed me that the case needs to be turned around because in his words, the case's butt is facing the camera and that might get us demonetized. So uh, that's the Redux teardown. We've seen enough at this point, it is not Incompetent. In fact, it is built fairly competently. Uh, not many major mistakes. Most of them were things that could be potentially ascribed to shipping damage. So better than we've seen in a lot of instances for pre-built. There's value there. Unfortunately, the price is so high that the value diminishes once we get into benchmarks, which is what we're going to do right now. Time to get into the gaming benchmarks. For this, as always, the silicon parts are made by other parties. That'd be Intel and NVIDIA in the case of the Redux PC. Performance derived from these parts is Pretty hard for an OEM or an SI to screw up, but it is possible. The bigger thing that we look for is the component selection and the combination, or how well the CPU and GPU work together. RAM sometimes comes into play as well. We'll start our gaming tests with Cyberpunk at 1080p. The Redux PC ends up being actually worse value than the Dell G5 5000 in average FPS, which is an impressive feat. Although the extra stick of RAM in the Redux means that it held better frame time consistency. That's worth something, but it's not worth $370. We don't recommend it, but even buying the Dell G5 
and installing $70 of RAM would be a far better deal. The $1,000 ABS Challenger blows away the Redux, outperforming it by an absolutely staggering 61%, while the Redux costs 27% more money. And ABS isn't an outlier here. CyberPowers 3200 BSD had similar performance improvements at about the same price reduction. The only real problem with the CyberPower PC was its CPU cooler, but that can be easily dealt with. Even if you bought the BST and paid someone to replace the cooler for you, or just took the panel off, it'd be better value and cheaper than the Redux while performing better. So this is a horrible start for the Redux. Regardless of how competently it's built, this doesn't really make any sense from a money perspective. With Red Dead Redemption 2, a heavily GPU-bound test in our suite, the Redux ended up about the same as an iBuyPower system with a GTX 1650 and a 10105F. The CPU is worse than the iBuyPower box, and that'll matter in CPU-bound tasks, like maybe 7-zip or something, but the performance is so bound on the GPU that Redux's advantage becomes irrelevant for some games, like this one. We're close to run-to-run -run variance or error here with a 1 FPS gap, and the difference in specific GPU also has an effect from minor changes to frequency. Redox has thoroughly at this point embarrassed itself in this testing, performing actually worse or about the same at best as a $680 computer that arrived with the video card ripped out of the PCIe slot. That's not to speak of the $1,000 Challenger or the $1,000 CyberPower 3200 BST, both of which outdid the Redox by 50% and cost less. And so again, we're, we're not wishing for things that are impossible here. We're not being unreasonable with our price expectations because two computers on this chart exist that have far better performance and cost less. And the IR power build that's on this one, we don't recommend it. There were a lot of reasons we didn't like it, but half the price, if given these two options, it would make more sense to buy that and then upgrade from there. Rainbow Six Siege drives another nail into the coffin. The Redux only ran at 132 FPS average, actually worse than the $680 iWay Power Box once again. That's because despite having a 10400F, the value of a good CPU is limited by the performance of the included GPU. Sticking a 1650 into anything and expecting high performance is a fool's errand, and this is clearly the limiting factor. Lows are a little bit better, and that's likely thanks to the CPU, but not in any way which is noticeable to a human, nor important for the price. So although this is more than playable, obviously, it isn't good value. The Challenger and the BST once again land about 50% ahead in average FPS. CyberPower technically had worse lows, and that's thanks to the memory configuration, so Redux outdid them there. However, another stick of RAM is cheap, and the ABS box already had it. And to the credit of other companies, Dell, iBuyPower, HP, Lenovo, they do all have boxes in the $1,200 range that if you buy right, would outdo the Redux here as well. For $1,300, you'd expect 1440p would be a reasonable request. That's fine for Rainbow Six, at least, where the game isn't too demanding overall. The Redux ends up worse than everyone else, once again, allowing the $1,000 computers to establish a 59% advantage. And allowing really is the right word here. Redux chose to bottleneck itself on this component selection. Thermals are up next. This is the best cooled pre-built we've tested. And that's because the Intel i5-10400F is a locked 65 watt TDP CPU, and Redux has some reason slapped a 240 millimeter CLC on top of it, which is something you're paying for. On top of all of that, the case has a total of six fans for this. We don't have a fan curve to complicate matters here, more on that later, so we can see that after an extended full system torture test with 100% CPU and GPU loads, the CPU settled at 56 degrees Celsius in 21C ambient. For context, the Dell G5 5000 got up to almost 90 degrees using the exact same CPU in its test. We tried increasing the pump speed past its default setting, but this had no significant effect on thermals for this one, and so we're not bothering to show the line here. The GPU stayed fairly cool as well, with the single fan GTX 1650 hitting steady state at 69 degrees, with hotspot temperatures of 80 degrees. The combination of extremely low power parts with unnecessarily powerful cooling means that thermals are not a concern for this system, so at least that's done well here. Because of the unnecessarily large liquid cooler that wastes budget, the Redux system is extremely quiet, and because of the static system fan speed, it doesn't get much louder under full load. Running the noise test using our standard methodology, the system ramped from a near silent noise reading that's close to our noise floor to just under 35 dBA as the GPU hit its maximum speed. That's still extremely quiet for a system under full load with this level of cooling performance, so Redux does well for this one also, if only due to overspending on cooling. Now as for the fan configuration, there are two fan headers on the motherboard, both of which are used. The three-pin DC pump plug is connected directly to the SysFan1 board 
and the header, and it's set to 7.2 volts, maximum 12. Meanwhile, the CPU Fan 1 header is connected via a four pin PWM cable to a fan hub. So this fan hub controls all four ARGB case fans as well as the two CLC fans. Take Redox's claim of free four CM master fans, $72 value with a mountain of salt, because the normal retail TD500 RGB already comes with three ARGB fans. However, the fan controls are absolutely awful. It's not explained anywhere, but the fan hub has three speed settings, low, medium, and external control. Out of the box, the fan hub was set to medium, which meant that for our stock testing, it ignored all PWM input and ran the case fans between 600 and 700 RPM constantly. At least it made testing simpler, but the only way to cycle between fan speeds is with the cheap battery powered RGB remote, which you should immediately duct tape to the side of the case to avoid losing. There's no visual feedback at all for which speed setting is currently selected. And also if the CPU is idling, for example, the external control speed might be slower than the static medium speed. So hitting the fan plus button can actually make the fan spin slower. If the CPU cooler weren't such overkill for 10400F, even at low speeds, this mess could have caused some serious problems by invisibly limiting the fan speed rather than just being an annoyance. And finally, a quick power test just to show you where it lands. The GPU loaded in gaming has full system power draw ranging around 140 watts. That's less than anything else on our chart containing a discrete GPU. But as we've seen, the drop in power here correlates with the drop in gaming performance. Time to talk about some of the setup, potential for bloatware, and the installation assistance. Redux has printed a short quick start guide on the inner flap of the box, including a valuable reminder to connect your keyboard and mouse to the P. That sounds painful, but we're willing to try anything once. A slightly more comprehensive quick start guide is included in the accessory kit, and it's one of the better guides we've seen with the pre-built. The illustrations in the guide are of the Cooler Master TD500, the case that was actually sent with our system, and there are specific instructions about removing its side panel. That may be because the TD500 is the only case that Redux uses right now, but it's still nice. The illustrations are simple and to the point, and more detailed and genuinely helpful explanations are relegated to the footnotes. The rest of the accessory kit is mainly spare hardware from the various components used in the system build. This includes alternate mounting hardware and paste for the 240mm CLC and the antenna for the wireless card. The exception is a live Windows 10 flash drive, 32GB, which Redux includes with the $110 Windows 10 home item on the bill. This is intended to be used as a DIY recovery tool. Flash drives are cheap, so not a lot of credit there, and Windows 10 Live Media Creation is free. But this is an extremely useful tool, and including it displays a level of trust in the consumer's basic mental faculties that we doubt we'll ever see from big companies like HP or Dell. The level of convenience offered here is of significant value for end users. The case and the cooler RGB patterns aren't synced, and the cooler RGB isn't affected by the remote control in the accessory kit, and there's a constant, quiet ticking sound from one of the front fans. But otherwise, the PC powered on without issue after we tested its setup instructions. We didn't notice any big mistakes in the BIOS settings, and it's likely that they were left unaltered from the factory default. BIOS is a couple versions old, dating from April of 2021, so we'd like to see a newer version installed. Subsequent updates have notes about improved CPU and GPU compatibility, as well as Windows 11 support as of September 15th. The board itself is an MSI B560M Pro E, which is technically an upgrade from the unnamed quote B460 chipset motherboard on our invoice. The CPU, SSD, and GPU are all PCIe Gen 3 hardware, so the upgrade doesn't help us here, but it's still a good thing. XMP was not applied, again, but in this instance, it's difficult for us to blame Redux too much. The configurator page for Redux build states that with a 10400F, memory speed will be 2666 megahertz, which it was out of the box. The page doesn't allow selecting a specific motherboard, so the implication is that a 10400F, the CPU included in our good tier preset build, you would get a motherboard from Redux's stock that doesn't support CPU or memory overclocking. The board we received does support memory overclocking, and the 3200MHz XMP on the memory received can and should be enabled. But that's not technically what we paid for. 
We just happened to luck out and get a combination of hardware that supports XMP. B560 added this over B460 and marked a significant change for Intel. The pre-installed NVIDIA driver was version 471.41 from July of this year, which is fairly recent as far as pre-builds are concerned. One PCI device driver was missing on first boot in device manager, but the system functioned normally and the driver successfully updated when connected to the internet. This still should have been installed, and it is a miss for Redux that the other companies haven't really missed in our testing yet. As for bloatware, there's only the standard Windows 10 junk. There aren't any obvious custom helpful additions from Redux like we've seen elsewhere. And to be clear, those additions aren't actually helpful. So Redux has done well here. Uh, there's zero, zero business whatsoever to be using uh, the Cooler Master 240 <laughs> Uh, liquid cooler in here, the 240 mil CLC, because it's just it's not only wholly unnecessary for a CPU that's like 65 watts under full load, uh, it is pulling money, it's siphoning money away from other components that could use it more. So the video card is a fantastic example. An extra 75 bucks is enough to bump it up a little bit. Uh, right now, the good tier from Redux as of uh, October includes a 1660 instead. It's priced at $1,420. It's not even better value uh, because a lot of the systems we were looking at on those charts earlier, they're 1660 supers, and many of them were cheaper still. Now, prices fluctuate a little bit based on availability, so when you check uh, their website, it may be cheaper, it may be different components, so that's standard. But overall, we're not seeing good value here. And even though the support was pretty good for what we had to use it, we haven't tested everything of it, but for what we had to use it for, it was pretty good. It's just, that's, that's a massive upcharge you're paying for basically the privilege of being able to quickly ask where your computer is. And you know, if it hasn't shipped from most other companies, even massive OEMs like Dell or HP, you can still cancel it online pretty easily. So it's just it, that doesn't seem worth it to us to get something that's this far down the stack in performance for $1,300. Because again, you've got, it doesn't, it's not even better than Dell in this one in terms of the overall average performance. It is, however, far better than Dell in terms of the serviceability uh, and the fact that you can upgrade it, the fact that it's standard components, the fact that it is built competently by someone who has built more than one computer in their life. So those are all good things. It's just there's not enough to justify the expense. So what we would like to see in terms of tangible changes that we think make sense, the case is overkill. This case, actually, we reviewed very positively when it came out, but its price has crept up over time, $120, $130 too much for something like this, and there's far better options out there. Now, Redux appears to be bulk buying the TD500 because it's the only thing it sells and it custom badges it. So we understand that they can't just easily swap in another case. Uh, it's not that simple when you're running a business with supply chain and volume. So we understand that, but there's wasted money on the case versus the rest of the components for a build of this tier. There's absolutely wasted money on the cooler. A stock cooler would be completely adequate if they're still using this case. This is so many fans. It's all of the fans, in fact. And the cooler, being a stock cooler at 65 watts, that's fine. It'll save something like 75 bucks according to Redux's own pricing table. That could be allocated elsewhere, or it could be cheaper as a computer, which would improve the value. So those are both options. The power supply is tough to comment on. It's a digital storm power supply. I don't think it's sold retail, or at least not commonly. So difficult to know exactly what the value of that is. Uh, technically, they could step it down a little bit and be fine, but it does appear that Digital Storm wants its own thing to be in there. So either way, you don't have to do that if you were to build your own. But at the end of the day, if you're buying a pre-built, hopefully at this point it's not for the video card. Because if you just want the video card, you can go get ripped off on eBay, and you'll still be spending less money than on one of these things, and you'll be less ripped off than one of these things. Not just Redux, but basically any of them. Uh, there was a period where it made sense to buy a pre-built for a video card. Now, it's not that much better off than if you, especially if it's got uh, proprietary parts in it, you're better off just buying it on eBay getting scalped there. If you actually want a pre-built computer and you're not going to just rip it apart and build your own thing with the parts that came in it, then buying from someone else seems maybe the better option from a value perspective. So uh, to wrap things up very succinctly, the build was competent. They knew what they were doing. They assembled it properly. We didn't really have any massive issues with the way it was assembled. The component selection was mismatched in a way that was poor for value. And uh, it performed poorly compared to other pre-built in terms of the price to performance ratio, as it were. But it's not garbage, so uh, that's good. It's not e-waste.
guess that's a good thing. At this point, that's what we're shooting for. So uh, not competitive, but not offensive either for the most part. A little bit offensive on the price. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. As always, subscribe for more. You can go to store.gamersaccess.net if you'd like to help us out directly and get something quality in return, or you can go to patreon.com slash gamersaccess for behind-the-scenes videos. Thank you for watching. We'll see you all next time.